Um, again, my name is Shelly Bolin, and I'm one of the financial advisors here at Andrews University. We are all glad that you joined us this evening as we start talking about paying for college. We have Faris Magessa, our Assistant Director of Student Accounts, and Kasser Ayaz, our Senior Financial Advisor, um, joining us this evening. So feel free to put any questions in the Q&A um, or chat, I guess, and they will try to answer your questions as I go through this presentation this evening. Again, uh, thank you for being here. As you start planning to go to college, you and your family may have questions such as, how much will it cost? Can I afford it? And where do I get go for help? To assist you in finding the answers to these questions, um, you first need to learn some of the basics. When deciding where to go to college, money shouldn't be the first thing you think about. Yes, college can be expensive, but there are ways to pay for it if you plan ahead. First of all, let's talk about financial aid programs. Financial aid for college refers to borrowed, given, or earned money that can be found through a variety of sources, including state, federal, institutional, private financial aid programs. Improve your chances by receiving financial aid by doing research, planning carefully, and applying early. Second of all, we're talking about the 529 savings and prepaid tuition programs. These are state-sponsored fund, excuse me, college funding programs designed to help families save for future college costs. Next, we have employer tuition benefit plans. If you work while you're in college, your employer may offer an employer discount reimbursement plan. These types of plans allow your employer to pay for the part or all of your tuition. Such plans are available at a variety of companies and some company policies are different. Contact potential employer whom you think would like to work during the college to learn about their unique plans. Next, we have tuition benefits. If your parent works at a college or university, you may want to consider attending that school to save money. Many colleges offer employee and or children of employers free, part-time as an employee, employee benefit. Employee and payment plans, tuition repayment, excuse me, tuition payment plans provide you with options to budget your tuition. Plan, plans may vary um, among colleges. Some allow you to pay multiple installments or over several months. Others require that you pay one lump sum per semester. A possible advantage to most tuition payment plans is that you might not occur that interest in finance charges that comes with loans and borrowed money. Next, we are going to talk about cost of attendance. This next year's co um, estimated cost to attend Andrews University for 12 to 16 credits is $16,205 per semester. Our general fee is $655. Room and board is estimated $5,025 per semester. Books and supplies, we estimate $550 per semester. Next, we talk about the expected family contribution, or EFC. It is an index number that measures a family's fam financial strength. We look at the student's contribution and also the parent's contribution. Okay. Next, we are going to talk of types of financial aid. Federal government is the most, 
most financial federal financial aid programs are administered by the U.S. Department of Education. Free money is usually a form of grants and scholarships. It's a system that goes that does not have to be repaid. Grants are usually awarded based on a family's financial need. Scholarships may be awarded on the basis of academic achievement, athletic ability, artistic talent, background, or other attributes you may possess. Next, we have earned money requires you to take a bit more responsibility, includes work opportunities and loans. Work study allows an opportunity to earn money while you're in college. The money you earn is paid directly to you and is up to you to use the money wisely. Next is borrowed money. Student loans are financial aid that must be repaid and should always be considered as a last resort for paying for college. By simply completing and submitting your free application, federal student aid or FAFSA as we call, you'll be considered for the, the Pell Grant, the Federal Supplemental Education Opportunity Grant, the Academic Competitiveness Grant, and Science and Mathematic Access to Retain Talent, or the SMART Grant. Make sure you put Andrews University as number one choice of your FAFSA. Both you and your parents can borrow from a variety of loan programs to help with your educational expenses. These funds require repayment, usually with interest, so please remember to borrow responsibly. After looking at federal and state resources of financial aid, it's always a good idea to look at institutional aid and private sources, colleges, university, and other higher education institutions also offer financial aid assistance to their students. The Financial Aid Office is the best place on campus to find out about financial aid. The first step in applying for federal aid and state financial aid programs is the completion, again, of the FAFSA. A FAFSA can be obtained from several places. On the internet at fafsa.ed.gov, your high school counselor, school financial aid office, or even your local library. The FAFSA ID is your electronic passport to federal student aid online. Some independent colleges and private scholarship programs may require more data than is required on the FAFSA. Be sure to communicate with each college to inquire about the steps you'll need to take to have to complete this application. Using your FAFSA ID, it's important to have that because the, the completion allows access to certain U.S. Um, Department of Education websites. It may be used by students and parents throughout the financial aid process, includes school other school years. Only the owner should create this FAFSA ID. And again, here you can apply studentaid.gov forward slash FAFSA dash ID forward slash create slash account forward slash launch. Again, that web that uh, link is right there if you'd like to review it again. Applying for financial aid, again, apply at studentaid.gov. FAFSA always opens on October 1st for the next year, so make sure you complete your FAFSA um, as soon as you can. State deadlines are at studentaid.gov. Just to make sure that you um, get those FAFSAs in before the deadline, okay? 
Use your student's FAFSA ID to start the application. If you need help, here's some um, phone numbers here and information that can help in the process, process of filling out your FAFSA. We are also available. If you do have questions or concerns, our office will be more than happy to help you also. The IRS data retrieval system allows for certain tax return information to be transferred from the IRS database. IRS will look, will um, authorize or make sure it's correct information on the taxpayer's identity. The applicant chooses whether or not to transfer the data to FAFSA. Available after refund process can be completed for taxes. Participation is voluntary, but suggested. We'll reduce documents requested by our office because sometimes we do ask for additional documentation too, depending on the school. Not available to certain applicants. Um, IRS transcript request. Again, um, www.irs.gov. I'm gonna give you a minute just to write those down if you have any questions, um, please. Um, put those in the Q&A or um, at, we can wait at the end and we might have some um, questions that we can answer too. IRS data retrieval. Go back. I apologize. I think I hit the wrong button there. Um, certain text filers cannot use this data retrieval system. And I just want to share those with you because um, if you try to do it and you may already you know that these it may not work it might save you some time also did not indicate on fafsa a tax return was completed okay marriage date is january 2022 or later um, first three digits of the social security number are 666 uh, filed a non-us tax return married and filed as head of the household or filed separate returns. Neither married parent entered a valid social security number. We find that um, actually quite often. So when you're filling out the FAFSA, please make sure that you do have the correct numbers in there. And again, a lot of people forget to sign the FAFSA too. So just another um, hint on that also. Non-married parent or both parents entered all zeros for their social security number. So again, I'm gonna give you a minute if you wanna look at this for the IRS data retrieval. You may not be able to use this due to these certain um, circumstances in your family. Here's 10 common FAFSA mistakes. Again, we reiterate when you complete the FAFSA, it's important to make sure you have all the information and hopefully the correct information. It's gonna make your process so much smoother when you do, um, when we, uh, we at our schools get the FAFSA, we wanna make sure it's all um, correct information. Um, so here are 10 common FAFSA mistakes. Um, waiting to fill out the FAFSA, not filing by the deadline, um, divorced, widowed, remarried parent information. Again, um, entering the incorrect information such as um, the social security number not right or not entering a social security number. Untaxed income, um, income tax paid, household size and number in college, real estate and investment net worth, not using the IRS data retrieval tool, not signing the FAFSA. Again, I'll give you a minute if you wanna look at this. Um, again, 10 common FAFSA mistakes. So just make sure each year when you fill out the FAFSA that you have all this information in there correctly. Um, well, I'm gonna talk just a few minutes about special circumstances. Um, we call, um, that a professional judgment form here at Andrews University. Um, you can fill that out if something has changed since you completed the FAFSA from prior prior years. So that may be um, change in income, 
that may be um, a change in employment status. Maybe mom or dad may have lost a job or changed jobs since they did complete that FAFSA for that year. Unusual medical expenses not covered by insurance. Um, change in parent um, um, marital status. Unusual dependent care expenses. Student cannot obtain parental information. Um, sibling tuition for primary or secondary education. And again, if you do fill out this form with us, we do require um, backup information. Um, so if there was a change in income, we would need that there was actually a change of inco income um, on a paycheck or uh, maybe there was a loss of employment, we would need maybe a termination letter, that type of thing. So that just, if that's um, helpful to you, we do have those forms available. When applying for financial aid, don't estimate your options. Never assume that you're too poor to attend college or too rich to receive some type of financial aid. Don't become overwhelmed by the price of attending college. It may not be what it seems. To review, start planning for the future. Complete the application process. Apply for the PIN and complete the FAFSA. Receive, revise, and edit the student aid report. Consider every award letter from colleges or universities that you have your FAFSA go to. But it's important to, to actually consider all the awards first before making a decision. Respond to college offers. Advise schools of outside scholarships. There might be um, some scholarships you've applied for that you know that are coming. Um, just let the school know that they will be coming. And then renew your FAFSA every year. Again, thank you so much for your time. And um, I hope you've learned something from this um, information this evening. And again, we have Faris Magessa and Kasser Ayaz um, that can answer questions too and um, have a good evening. Thank you. Hello, thank you, Shelly, for that, um, that presentation. That was super helpful. If any of you guys have any more questions, please keep popping them into the Q&A rather than the chat. Um, we will keep on working on those for you. Um, let's see, looks like we've got 11, 12 questions so far, so keep them coming. Shelly, would you be able to answer um, the deadline for FAFSA? Yes, I'm back. Um, yeah, so we we do ask that the that we do have the FAFSA done um, by June. I would hope that everybody would get it in, you know, as soon as October 1st and um, then, you know, to get your award letters from all the schools. So the sooner the better. So I like to say October 1st, but I, I believe it's the end of June that uh, we do accept those till. All right. We also have a question from someone else that says, I have not applied for any scholarships, but I am graduating in May. Is it too late to receive aid if I want to enter college this fall? As far as scholarships? Mm -hmm. No, 
I think you can um, continue even throughout the school year um, applying for scholarships. Even if you go to a college, you can still um, search scholarships. Absolutely. I don't think there'd be a deadline on that. I agree with that. Um, let's see here. We also have a question from someone else. What about international students? I assume that's scholarships for international students or maybe FAFSA? Um, FAFSA is, um, it is not for um, international students. Um, we do ask for a social security number to process FAFSAs. Um, they do get a scholarship of $14,000 a year, um, international students. So um, please, you know, apply and get accepted. And um, you can also reach out to our International Student Services Office at isfs at andrews.edu. And um, they can help you through the process um, of getting um, your budget sheet completed. And we do require deposit. Um, but again, you do um, you would qualify for that fourteen thousand um, dollar Andrews Partnership Scholarship. All righty, perfect. And then let's see. I think we've already answered the financial aid options for um, international oh, students. Yes, thank you, Cassie. That's the correct uh, email for them. Thank you. Uh, let's see here. Does Andrews require SAT slash ACT scores for scholarships? Good question. Um, we're actually test optional here at Andrews University. Um, we do not require um, those scores, but if you're a good test taker and if you get 1490 on your SAT, um, you would actually get the 100%, which is um, going to be that 16,000 that I mentioned earlier, um, your tuition would be paid for. Um, and then 34 and your ACT, but it is not required. Correct. All righty. Let's see here. What scholarships or financial aid are available for international students and how can I go about the process to attain these? So I think this is more about how to attain the international scholarship or other financial aid options. Right. So I, again, I would talk to the International Student Services Office. Um, Sometimes um, the departments that they're maybe um, going to be studying in maybe would have some scholarships or extra funds, but I'm not aware of any other scholarships. We do have a music scholarship um, if you are up to $1,500, if any of you are musical, um, you just need to do an audition with our music department. That's a scholarship. Um, that might, that might help a little bit too. But at this time, I'm only aware of the 14,000 for the international students um, for the, you know, that scholarship for them for the year. All right, let's see. What requirements must I need to apply for the APS scholarship? Um, well, that might be a, a admissions question maybe. I can answer that, yes. Okay. So um, everybody that applies and gets accepted to Andrews University uh, does receive Andrews Partnership Scholarship. So really all you need to do is get admitted and then um, we automatically apply it to your account and then you don't even have to worry about applying for it other than the school. So win-win um, basically. <laughs> um, let's see here. Oh, yeah, this is, this is a good one here. Um, a little question came up here. Um, if any of you in, are interested, um, if you work at any of our summer camps throughout the United States, um, it's a great opportunity for kids to work and it's fun. Um, I did it. My son did it. It was great. Um, what happens is, is however many weeks you work, Andrews University will um, give you a scholarship based on $210 by how many weeks you actually work at camp. Plus the camp pays you for the summer. Mm -hmm. So to me, that's like, you know, you get the camp scholarship plus we would give you a scholarship based on how many weeks you worked. And then your camp director would just need to let us know how many weeks you worked. And we would put that on your fall semester um, statement and or on your award. And you would get that for fall semester only. 
But again, okay. it's a great opportunity. And again, it's free money that you can get towards your account. That is true. Um, let's see. Uh, do Canadian students need to take the SAT to attend Andrews? If so, when are they required to take the SAT? No, you are not required to take the SAT to attend Andrews. Um, we are test optional for ACT and SAT. So, mm -hmm. Um, let's see here. If you're attending a community college through a dual enrollment program and you have your associate's degree when you graduate high school, are you a transfer student or a freshman? So this, this gets a little tricky sometimes, but, um, from what I understand, you are a freshman as long as, um, those credits were done while you were still in high school. Once you have completed high school, you would then be considered a transfer student um, if you got those credits after that. Um, when and how will Andrews notify students whether or not they are accepted? When we accept a student, we will um, shoot them an email right off the bat typically. And then um, assuming you're not an international student, we will give you a call as well. Um, and you will also receive a letter in the mail and an acceptance box. So assuming you, your email is correct, your number is correct, and we have your address correct, you should hear from us. And also I was going to mention too, also um, once you've, if anybody has filled out the FAFSA and put Andrews University on there um, and you're looking for your award, we're working really hard to get those awards um, going to you guys. So stay tuned, kind of monitor your email um you know for that award letter to see because those are coming shortly yes um let's see uh, so APS Andrews Partnership Scholarship this will probably mm -hmm. answer a few questions possibly um but we look at it's not just your GPA that we look at to give you the scholarship it is also based off of um, the high school um, curriculum as well as the GPA, and if you've taken test score, or like, you know, ACT or SAT, um, then we will also base it off of that. Um, we'll always give the student the highest amount we can based off of those, um, those, uh, what is the word I'm looking for? Those aspects. Um, there's some, there's a question here that maybe, could we mention the leadership scholarship? Yes. So that's a brand new scholarship. And that is going to be for incoming freshmen. I don't believe this applies to transfer students. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, but I believe it's just for freshmen that they will receive $750. It's a one-time scholarship. So this does not renew. Um, and that'll be put on, I believe, just their first semester. Correct? I believe it's for freshmen only for the first year. Okay. That's my understanding. All right, and can you transfer your classes from a local college to this university? Um, the answer is yes. As long as your school is accredited, we typically accept those credits. Um, you need to send us your official transcript because we cannot um, use the credits off of your unofficial transcript. Um, so as soon as you send us your official, we can get that, um, what is uh, articulated, that's the word, <laughs> articulated, and then those credits should show up um, on your record. Great. If you score a 34 on ACT and already were already awarded the APS, can you use the ladder for room and board? Um, so when you're given a um, APS, if, if something changes, we can adjust the APS. You're, we'll never give you less, but we'll always, it, if you get a higher GPA, if you get better test scores, anything like that, we can up your, your APS. Um, you just have to let us know, otherwise we won't know. <laughs> um, I'm not sure though, if it can be put onto room and board. So Shelly, do you have any Yeah, so this, I'm assuming with the 100% APS you're talking about, that goes for tuition, okay? Tuition only. So if, so um, for instance, if you apply for the FAFSA and you receive maybe, a Pell Grant, maybe some of the loans, um, you can use tho those funds for whatever else is on your statement. And that could be room and board, that could be maybe for 
course, or lab fees or anything like that. So um, I would I would encourage you to still do the FAFSA because those funds can be added to the room and board, yes. But the APS is only for your tuition. Okay, good answer. Mm -hmm. um, from what age can I enter Andrews University? Um, we don't typically, we don't really have a age necessarily. You just have to have finished high school and or or the equivalent. Um, and then after that, pretty much you get admitted and then you can come. Um, we don't have a cap on that either. So it doesn't matter if you're older or younger, as long as you have finished what you need to, um, then you can come to Andrews. What and we want you to come to Andrews. Yes, we do. That is that's <laughs> accurate. <laughs> uh, what kind of jobs are offered at Andrews for student workers? Um, personally, I did attend Andrews all four years, and I worked in undergraduate admissions as a student worker. So um, that's one option. You can also work in the cafeteria or in the gazebo, which is the cafe. Um, we also have custodial jobs. We have, um, you can, I think you can work with campus safety as a student worker. I'm not 100% sure on that. I could be wrong. But we have like endless options for student workers. There are a lot mm -hmm. of options um, as TAs, um, all sorts of things. So you should be okay to find something here on campus. Um, can credits, um, I'm going to let somebody else answer that. Uh, how much? Oh, that just disappeared. I am U.S. citizen, but did high school outside the U.S. How is my high school diploma for acceptance? Um, it really depends on where you're coming from because we have different, um, different, different, different rules and regulations for different countries. Um, our international credentials office is what would de determine that. So your international transcript, we can work with that. Um, you'd have to email us directly so we can figure out what you specifically will need. But yes, that should be fine. Um, let's see here. I have a rigorous schedule and an unweighted GPA of 3.80, basically. Um, however, my SAT score was not very high because I am not a good test taker. Could I still get my scholarship money? So yes, because we are um, test optional, we will just base it off of your high school curriculum and your GPA. So you'll still get APS no matter. Um, that is just going to not be based on your test scores if that would bring it down. Um, let's see here. If you're in a dual enrollment program at a community college, does Andrews look at the high school or the community college grades? We look at both. Yeah. So yeah, we would look at both of those. Um, besides the full tuition scholarships for the ACT and SAT scores, are there partial scholarships available for getting close to the full tuition scores? Um, hold on, can I get that back? <laughs> Sorry, I needed to look at that a little longer. Um, are there partial scholarships for getting close to the full tuition scores? So our scholarships range from 8,000 to 10,000 to 12,000 to 14,000, and then the 16,000 would be full tuition. So on average, it's gonna be from 8,000 to 14,000, and it goes by twos. So yes, technically we have, if you wanted to consider it a partial scholarship, but um, yeah, everybody will receive some amount of APS. And I believe um, if, if I'm not mistaken, um, if you are doing the SAT or, S or um, ACT, um, we do accept the highest score up until the first day of school. So you could continue to take those tests if you feel like you could do better. Like if you're really close, you have a 30, 33 and you're like, I want to try for 34, you know, if you feel like you could, and we do accept the highest scores um, before the first day of school. So. Yes, that is true. Um, also, we have another question. Um, the 3.7 GPA went to a top high school in the nation, but you did not take the ACT or SAT. Can you receive a full tuition scholarship? Um, unfortunately, the full tuition scholarship is only achieved with um, a 34 or higher on the ACT or a 1490 or higher on the SAT. Those are the, that's the only way to get that 
that full tuition. So even international students can take that test. Um, it's it's harder to find the the test um, to take, but if you can find it, then um, absolutely take it. And if you can get the score, then you'll get full, full tuition as well. Um, how to apply for the leadership scholarship. So any amount of leadership, I believe, is going to give you that leadership scholarship. So if you mention it to your academic advisor, um, we can get that set up for you or your financial advisor, either one. Um, I don't know the answer to that one. Do we have anybody on here from International Student Services? Okay. I don't think so. Okay. Again, I would maybe reach out to the to that office directly and uh, they'd be more than happy to help you. So everyone that applies to Andrews University will receive scholarships. Um, that's what it, our Andrews Partnership Scholarship is and it ranges from $8,000 to $14,000. Um, the full tuition scholarship is achieved with a 1490 or higher on the SAT or a 34 or higher on the S or the ACT. Um, so if you don't take the ACT or SAT, you will still receive a scholarship. It just won't be a full tuition scholarship. Anybody else have any questions? Hopefully Faris and Caster are Typing away, answering all those questions too. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Um, let's see. Uh, we also have some helpful links in the chat. If you guys want to take a look at those, they might answer some of your questions. Um, let's see. Yeah, there's a, it looks like there's a scholarship one, which is that that's helpful. Um, the scholarships that are available. That's awesome. All right, just to confirm, did you say that students can still take the SAT or ACT and send it to Andrews as long as it is before the first day of school because I already sent my application. So you need, mm -hmm. to, take, you need to take the test before July 17th, but you can send us your scores up until the first day of school and we can adjust that. Mm -hmm. um, also Thanks. that is for freshmen students, not transfers. Yeah, thanks for that clarification. I forgot to mention it earlier, so. <laughs> <laughs> um, full tuition scholarship is until you graduate. Um, I assume that means graduate from high school and that is, or no, actually, I, would, I guess that would mean graduate from college. Mm -hmm. So that is gonna renew every year for, I believe it is 10 semesters. <laughs> Or up to 144 credits. There we go. And please confirm, but I think it's you have to keep your GPA at 2.0. I believe so. I'm not 100% sure on that, but I do believe you're correct on that. Um, where can you go to take the SAT? It depends on where you are. I would suggest using Google. Honestly, that's the best way to find it. Just see um, in your area where they're doing SAT. Sometimes your school will have SAT or ACT testing dates. Um, so mm -hmm. check with them first. Um, they might also know of some testing centers in the area if, if they don't have it themselves. Um, do we offer it at Andrews in the summer? We do. Yes, we offer mm -hmm. SAT and ACT if you can get here. Yeah. But I don't believe that we send that score to other schools. That's only for Andrews to my knowledge. Mm -hmm. um, any advice on getting the highest ACT or SAT score possible? Honestly, do some of the, the practice tests that they have available. That's probably gonna be your best bet. Um, also, we do super score. I'm not sure if we mentioned that previously, but if you take it multiple mm -hmm. times, our system will combine um, your uh, highest scores and then create a new composite score. Um, so you could reach the 34 or 1490 because of super score. Yeah, I didn't mention that. That's a good point. Very good point. Thank you. Yep, not a problem. Um, 
So I feel like we should answer this one also on live. Do you have any scholarships for Latinos? So we do actually offer a full tuition scholarship for the National Hispanic Merit Award, I believe is the full, full name of it. And that is something that you get by taking the PSAT and marking on it that you do have Hispanic heritage. Um, and then they will contact you and let you know if you've received that scholarship or the certificate, and then you can send that to us and we'll give you full tuition for it. Yeah, that's a great one. Um, let's see. Any, uh, we already got that one. And answered that one. Where can you get the info for the National Hispanic Merit Award? So, I believe we have some info information on our website about it. I'm not sure how extensive it is. So it's not something we technically um, do. We offer a scholarship for it, but it's something that you receive by taking the PSAT. Mm -hmm. So um, there will be uh, more information about that if you take a look at that on our website or on Google. And I think we might have it listed on our website too at andrews.edu forward slash SFS student financial services. I believe it's on there too. Um, can we get that in the chat? Oh yeah. Just so people can. Get um, let me see if I can put that in there real quick. Sure. Um, how do you apply for scholarships hmm. for aviation? I believe mm. I can. You know what? I wasn't able to get it in chat. I don't know if someone would be able to uh, maybe put that in there, our um, SFS um, link there. Cassie, do you think you can get that in the chat for us? Thank you. Any other questions? It looks like our last question is being answered. We had a really oh, good turnout today, so. Um, the, way, the link is um, andrews.edu forward slash SFS. Okay. Student Financial Services. And there's a lot of um, a lot of information on our website too. You, I would suggest maybe just perusing that too. Yes, perfect. Thank you, Cassie. Um, can international Hispanic students take the PSAT? I'm actually not sure about that. I would assume yes, but honestly, I'm not sure. Shelly, do you know? I don't know that answer. Um, oh boy. Uh, that might, we need to throw that over to maybe Forrest or Casser. They might be able to clarify that for us. Okay. Um, Let's see here. Is it less expensive to have a dorm roommate? It is definitely mm -hmm. less expensive to have a roommate. You will pay more. I don't know if it's double or if it is just higher. Um, well, this year's it's, I think it's 2660 was for a roommate. And I think it's 32, 3,200 for just a single next year's I have, we are just getting our price list out. So, but that's what it is currently. So yeah, there is a little bit of a, a um, difference in the dorm. If you want to just live by yourself compared to a roommate. Yeah. But some students would prefer to have, you know, to study by yourself and that's fine. Absolutely. I did both half and half. <laughs> and I had a roommate, so. <laughs> Um, for the leadership scholarship, yes, you can just email your advisors about that, and they should be able to get that for you for the leadership scholarship. Um, do we offer computer engineering? Yes, we do. We offer all, uh, there's four of them, so com chemical, computer, um, electrical, and mechanical. Those are our four concentrations of engineering. These are a lot of good questions. Thank you everybody for putting your questions in. Uh, 
And yes, Andrews is cold part of the year, but nice and warm mm-hmm. another part of the year. So don't let the cold <laughs> be the issue. That's right. There's a lot of fun things to do in the cold too. So. Mm-hmm. What are some other questions? Um, looks like what scores does the super store or super score, sorry, use to calculate? Um, so that's going to be the highest. Um, that's going to be the highest uh, score for each individual category, which then combines to be your composite and then it'll take the highest of each category and combine for a new composite. Okay. I am being told that I need to (laughs) end this session. So um, please feel free to join our talks with Andrew's ambassadors. And that's going to be on March 8th. Um, Let's see here. Um, You can ask questions to our current students, um, some of our ambassadors. So thank you guys for attending. Um, We had a really great turnout and lots and lots of good questions. So I hope this was helpful Mm -hmm. to people. Um, If you guys have any questions, you can also email us or call us and we'll be happy to answer those for you. Yes. Thanks everybody for stopping by.